In this video, we're going to use the assets and the paths that we made in the previous steps, and we're gonna create a screen with them and maybe a couple of screens so we can see how to do some various things. First, I'm going to open up my overworld and I'm gonna pick a screen. I could pick this screen, but I'm gonna pick an arbitrary screen. Say this one right here. Why? I don't know. I like that one. So I'm gonna open that one up and you'll see it automatically loaded all of my zero defaults. It loaded my first tile set. It loaded my first palette set. It loaded you know, the assets from that, uh, et cetera. Uh, but I could easily change my palettes to that other palette that I made. And then you know, when I started creating graphics on here, it would create, this screen would now have this palette. Um, but I'm gonna stick to this palette right here. And I'm gonna start placing assets in this room. Let's start with placing these dull spikes. They're not really gonna do anything. They don't hurt me, so I could just place them around. And since this is a 16 by 16 asset, let me stretch the screen a little bit until, all right, there we go. So uh, I can click and actually drag this around and it's gonna create these dull spikes. It almost looks like I'm up against a swamp or something. Um, and if now for a bigger asset, I can click and drag, except that happens. Um, let's say I wanna get rid of something. I can either get my grass tile or if I wanna erase something, I could also use the five key on my computer, which acts as an eraser. It doesn't actually erase things. What it does is it draws over it with the number zero tile, whatever you have as your first tile, which is usually gonna be grass or ground and it's gonna have a null uh, collision. So it's like erasing, but just so you know how that's actually working. Um, to place a tree, I'm just gonna sort of click around and to place these trees. And a couple of things you'll note. First of all, you can see all the data about the tiles you're placing up here at the top. So if I place my mouse over this one, I can see that these are solid and these are solid, but this is walkable right here, right? And these spikes here, these are insta-kill tiles. I can see that right here. Um, so that's that's one thing. Uh, uh, another thing is if I wanna just look at the collisions so I can see where everything is, I can turn on collisions and now I can actually see the values of collisions for everything. And everything that's that's null is, is represented in white and everything else is represented in zero. So I could put like barriers here that like look like normal tiles, but they're not. And I could jump into collision to be able to see where I put those. Um, if I wanted to change the, let's say that this is supposed to be a secret walkable version of the spikes, like there's a secret there for some reason, I can right click on it and modify its attribute and I can actually change the tile type. So let's make it walkable for a second. Now, if I move my mouse over it, you can see up here, this one's insta-kill, but this one's walkable and then insta-kill again. So I can, you know, I can manually change these without having to make a whole asset that just has that graphic and a different tiles. I can actually manually change these on the screen um, I'm gonna manually turn that back to insta-kill, so now all these are insta-kill again. Let's build the paths. In order to actually put the paths in, I have to go up to screen info, and I have to tell it what paths do I wanna use. Well, I only made one. I only made normal paths, so I'm gonna select that one, and now all that path data is loaded in for me to work with. In order to work with paths, sometimes it's easiest to get rid of that graphic that's under my cursor right now. If I hit escape, that graphic goes away. If I hold down my one key, it automatically creates the path that I made. If I hold down my two key, it automatically creates that second path that I made. So maybe this is a dock area. There we go. Um, so that's how I can add paths. And again, if I move my mouse over, that one's solid, that one's walkable. It, it put in the color information, the collision information, and the tile information automatically as I dragged my mouse around the screen holding the one, two, three, or four keys. Uh, so that's super handy and you can see how that just snaps together so fast and, and you know, it's so versatile as far as what you can do with it. Um, so, so that's basics of building a screen. Let's talk about a couple extra features. Uh, if I hit the plus screen, the plus button, it's gonna start showing me further into the screens to the sides of me, to above me, below me, to the left and right of me. And that's gonna help me sort of line up collisions and stuff like that. If I hit the minus key, it'll take me back. Now I'm gonna go to my overworld and let's make a screen next to this one. I'm gonna double click on it. And I can see this screen, but let's say I wanna see more. If I hit the plus sign, now I can see half of that screen and it's really easy for me to sort of build in uh, a thing. Now I haven't set this one to have the same paths. So I'll go to screen info, 
set my normal paths, and now hit escape. I can continue on with what I was doing there, and I can match the collisions to the screen next to me like that. And then when I want to go back to see, oops, when I want to go back, I can hit minus, and there we go. And now I can see screen by screen. The arrow keys will also take you from screen to screen, so I can quickly jump from screen to screen. So that's super handy. Um, and let's make this path go across the water. So I'm going to do that. There. Um, some other things to note as far as building your screens. One, you have different screen states. Now, in the current modules, the in the base module that you're going to be working with, the only thing you have is normal and uh, day normal and day triggered. Um, you will have monsters that you can put on day normal and different ones for day triggered. So, for instance, you could put monsters on day normal, and when you defeat them all, you could make an NPC appear, and now it's triggered, and now when you go back to that place, it's safe. Or you could make it get harder when it gets triggered or whatever. But the idea is that you can have a screen have multiple states, um, and you can look at the multiple states by just jumping over uh, normal or triggered. And when we place monsters, we'll take a look at that. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can actually see the grid if you wanted to for some reason. I don't know uh, why you would need to, but if you needed to, especially for placing monsters and stuff, you can you can do that. You could also just look at that trees group. You could look at your groups of assets rather than all of the assets at a time, which is super handy. Um, and real quick cursory look at screen details. This is where you can get into to say, okay, what song do I want? Uh, for this screen. What NPC dialogue group do I want? Where do I warp in and out of? Um, what screen type is this? Zero out of 255. And then these, the screen flag bits, which are going to become super important for depending on what type of game that you want to make. So we're going to come back to that when we're doing more with screens uh, and we're getting to that point. But I just wanted to show it to you real quick so that you understood that there's more information here than just setting the paths. Uh, so that's how easy it is to draw in screens and, and make stuff happen. And the next step, we're going to make our first game object. We're going to make a player game object and actually sit him in this room.